you were bringing something up. I, I don't know that it was directly related, but it you know kind of got my mind going a little bit. You were talking about what's needed for me in this situation and talking about, okay, the, the Nebraska baseball game last night and being situationally aware and kind of breaking things down into smaller parts to understand like, okay, this might be a good decision here, but it's not a good decision in this other situation. And it, it got me to thinking about an answer that Rule gave you know, I'm, yesterday specifically, but it's something that I've noticed he does a lot. And that's really dissects things in a way that I'm not, I'm not saying other coaches don't do it, but other coaches that we've at least seen here haven't talked about it in the same way. And the answer that he gave yesterday that I was talking about was he, he, he kind of broke down the off season a little bit where he goes, Hey, you have to be great in the winter to give yourself a chance in the spring. And then you have to be great in the spring to give yourself a chance in the summer. And then you have to be great in the summer to give yourself a chance in fall camp. Right. And then that's when you actually get a chance to see who the best players are and who's keeping the standard and, and that type of thing. And it kind of just struck me because usually we talk about the off season just as a, a whole thing, right? Oh, we got to get better in the off season. Sometimes we'll break it down into early enrollees and then summer enrollees, but that's about it, right? But this man, and you've seen him do it with other things, right? Where he goes, hey, it starts here. It starts in this one little spot. We don't get to do anything. You know, you heard him talk about last year. We have to earn the right to go play Minnesota. We have to earn the right to go do this and that. We have to earn the right to go to practice tomorrow. The, his ability, and you even heard it with the Jamal Banks answer and the, and the wide receiver's answer, when somebody asks about press coverage, and he goes into like 18 different things to do with coaching wide receivers. And he's like, ah, but you're going to have to ask Garrett about that because I'm not a wide receiver's coach or whatever he said, right? His ability to break things down into their tiny little parts to, A, make them seem more digestible when you're asking a kid to do it, and B, make sure you don't miss anything, I think is really probably one of the most underrated aspects of the way he goes about things. Mm. <clears throat> so there's a couple things. Uh, number one, just listening to that, I felt like there are those components in my personality that if you don't like me, probably drive you crazy, mm -hmm. right? I'm, I'm a how do we get here guy. Mm -hmm. Break it down. Let's get here. Let's talk about it. That way we can keep it from happening again. Mm -hmm. And it's a little deeper than topical stuff. Like if you're not built for that, it's like, oh man, here this dude goes again, right? Yeah, it's tough to deal with if you're not if you're not wired that way. It is. Yeah. But it's the main reason why I'm drawn to what he's doing because he's in what I would call the when you're when you think like that, you're in the solutions business. Mm -hmm. You don't just sit around and bitch and moan about what the problems are. It's okay, let's take some self inventory here. And when you do that and you get people to, to buy into that, that's how you can get change. When I'm what he what you just described so eloquently, don't ask me to spell it. Yell, there's oh, a Q in Q there. Q U E N T L Y, something like that. It's I, I'm you're not even Indian, that's pretty good. I'm better at math than I am spelling, <laughs> but don't tell my man Jamie. Um, that's what I asked Schaefer yesterday, mm -hmm. okay. And I didn't know this is necessarily how he thinks because he hasn't really talked about it the way that he did yesterday with compartmentalizing. I'm just drawing on what what I used to know spring ball to be. And I basically said, why can't we just take spring for what it is? They're getting better in this phase. You remember this question, mm -hmm. right? Yep. They're getting better in this phase. And it's not like it's not like a referendum on the team. It's just spring. And you guys both – tag team it was like animal and hawk mm -hmm. well you're asking people to be rational I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if i'm asking that i'm i'm saying if you trust him and he's telling you this and he hadn't even said this yet mm -hmm. like why don't we just listen and you guys both told me that that's apparently too hard to do because we, we got to let fans off the hook from just listening Right. That, like, that's basically what you guys were trying to explain I, to me. That's not what I was trying to say. OK, so hang on, because yeah. I'll let you go back and get that. Mm -hmm. He's telling you. Hey, when are we do this? This is the goal. Mm -hmm. Spring, we do this. This is the goal. Mm -hmm. Summer, we do this. This is the goal. Then remember when I used to tell you, I was like, fudge, like winter was where you wanted to we do go through winter conditioning. I said, this is where you want to put yourself in position to go compete for a job. Mm -hmm. And I said, spring, you got to work on competing for a job. Summer, you're trying to hold the guys off 
And in fall, if you're close, you got to go get it. Mm -hmm. That's how I, and I've said this for almost verb because yeah, almost verbatim for as long as I've been behind this mic. And it wasn't, well, that was the only way to do it. It was just how the, it's just how the segments in the year work out. It's how coaches do it. Mm -hmm. But we, but we can't, we can't come, we can't pull back and just understand like that's part of it. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think I'm asking people to be rational. I, and I tried to go back and reword it. What if we don't have to let it get, be so emotional about it? Like, what if it doesn't have to be this and it all fits with the stories, right? It's like, what if we don't have a definitive quarterback? Do we need a definitive quarterback coming out of spring? Mm -hmm. Do you need a definitive running? You don't think with as good a groups as we had sometimes that we didn't know who the number one running back was going to be in come fall. So that's we always thought we had a chance. So let me hit, hit pause there, right? Because what you brought up is press pause is right, but there's an important distinction there, which is what I was going to bring up about the conversation yesterday, and that's Shave. context, right? The context under which something's happening is very important because in the context you described with you guys. I believe you 100%. It could have been, but let's, let's use a running back group, right? Could have been you, could have been Clinton, could have been Amon, could have been LP, could have been anybody on any given day, and everybody would have been okay in terms of the fans, right? Because we all knew you all could play, right? Everybody would have been cool. It could have been on any given day, could have been Tommy, could have been Brooke. Most people would have been cool, right? Because we knew both those guys could play. Uh, go ahead. I want to let you finish before I... Go ahead. I think from a fan perspective, okay, that's how fans saw it at the time. Now I know in the locker room, especially at quarterback, is a little different. Okay, can I ask something real quick? And yeah. then you go. How much of that do you think? Try to remember. Mm -hmm. Do you think had to do with trusting Coach Osborne more than knowing that the players were good? Because I got the sense you guys didn't care who we played because it was To. So, be I honest. I think that's hard to honestly. I think it's really hard to separate to go back and get. Yeah, because. It's sort of, it's a chicken or an egg thing, right? We trust because of the winning. The winning happened because guys were good. Guys so when did that start? Because he wasn't always winning. So he wasn't always winning at that level, but he was always winning. Okay. Right. It's fair. Right. Yeah. I'll take it. So even though I, at some points, sometimes I didn't get the sense that that was enough. Right. And I, I can only go so far we're, back. We're, we're cool with saying that now because we have. Yeah, we, we built championships on it. Yeah, I don't know if we would have got the championships. Would we have felt like that? Sure. Probably, it seems like he'd have been a little more closer to Bo than. Yes, sure. Right. But again, we went back yesterday and said Bo was the last guy we felt like we trusted. Okay. At, at some point during his career. So, so that's cool. I, I, so, so this is why context. This is why the context matters for Coach Rule, right? Correct. Because we want to trust Coach Rule. We like what we hear. We are really, really close, and we trust him on most things. But the context of where the program is and has been seeds doubt. You guys told me yesterday mm -hmm. that, and you're like, we're talking a decade. Oh, my God, I feel like I'm kind of getting bullied here. I know. Mm -hmm. But why do, we have to, why do we have to go back? Like, why can't we stay right where we are and say, if I, if I trust this guy, then I trust this guy sure. because he actually yeah. has a track record of doing this. for moving things forward. So this is where it gets a little tricky, right? Because I don't want to let fans off the hook. I agree that we don't have a reason not to trust rule, right? And not yet. And he's given us lots of reasons to trust him. He told you that stuff wasn't yes. on him. Right. And I get that. But you can say something's not on you. That okay. doesn't erase it from the fans experience. Nope. Okay. And that doesn't mean the fans don't need to be a little bit better. And, you know, like I used this example the other day, right? I don't know if getting better is the term. It's just, it's just re, it's just recalibrating or just taking a different but, vantage point. But in order to take a different vantage point, a lot of times you have to do a little self improvement, right? Like I used this example the other day when we were sort of talking about something similar, where let's say you get out of a bad relationship and then you get into a really good relationship. Sometimes there's some things that carried over that happened in your previous relationship that makes certain things either hard to believe or harder to work through in your new relationship. You know what helps with that? Going to therapy, taking self-inventory, getting a little bit better, right? That's where Nebraska fans are right now with coaches and the program in general. Still love it. We're excited about the new relationship. But there's some things that have carried over mm -hmm. from the previous relationships that make it a little bit harder to trust all the way again. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I'm not trying to let them off the hook. 
just like I wouldn't let a person off the hook. Like, go to therapy. Yeah, you, do the you, work. You know, and I and I I'm with you. Like, on its on 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 the surface, I I get it, but it's like I would say in any conflict resolution, mm-hmm. the more mature person's got to go first. Sure. Right. Like, so sometimes you have to say, "Hey, I know I was wrong." So in this situation, this, that, who's that? Who's that, the more mature person? That would be Coach Rule. Agreed. So and he is going first. He's going first. But we got to see a little bit okay. to follow. All right. Right? Is yeah. that fair? Yeah. It might not it, be right, but is it my fair? My opinion on whether you think that that's fair or not <laughs> is inconsequential. It's just not how I would handle it. I get that's not how you operate. Doesn't make it not fair, though. I think that's how a lot of fans operate. I'm with you. Brian Kersoff, the Husker 24-7, coming up next.